For a little bit more clarity on this, we're now joined by the executive chairperson of Africa Energy Chamber, Mr. N.J. Ayuk. Thanks very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Peter. All right, so we have this dilemma on the continent. We are blessed with a lot of um, resources, some of which fossil fuels. However, we have just seen this uh, UN report come out on Monday suggesting that the time for fossil fuels is behind us and we really need to look forward to cleaner energies to stop climate change. How do we navigate these two difficult scenarios uh, for a continent that's desperate for energy to grow? Peter, the UN report is actually very good for Africa. And I'll tell you why. We have, Africa is a gas continent that found crude. So you could start saying that we move forward with gas monetization because gas is the cleanest form of, of fossil fuels. And so that would be good for Africa. But we also have to build an energy mix that will include renewables. When we have renewables in our energy mix, we would be able to develop. But let's look for, at the problem what we face in Africa. Yeah, our continent still has about 650 million people without any access to electricity. That's why the African Energy Chamber says energy poverty is our crisis of the day in our continent. You are not going to meet this without resolving the energy poverty issue. That's why you're going to see everybody going to Cape Town in November because we have to deal with this issue and put it on the agenda. But we are going to monetize gas and we are going to also include um, renewables in the African energy mix. All right. In the meantime, are you saying that uh, there are far too many people living in poverty for us to discard fossil fuels in the short term? Absolutely. If you don't have electricity, you are not going to run industries. You have to use gas to create power plants, to even create some of the mining that has to be done for some of the batteries you're going to need for renewables. But you've got to invest in them. If you, you cannot just come in with a Western point of view saying, get rid of your gas, get rid of your oil, get rid of your coal, but, you, but there is no money for you to invest in renewables, there is no money to do that. Africans are not the cause of this problem, but it doesn't matter who caused the problem or what boat we are. Right now, we all are in the same boat and we need to find solutions. In order to find solutions, we need to be able to finance it. Europe is going to spend $6 trillion a year to fix the climate issue. Africa only has $1 billion, $100 billion that was promised to Africa during the Paris Agreement, that money was never given. So what Dr. King says, we came back with a, with, a, with a bad check. Africa was served a bad check. If Africa is going to meet its own end in this bagging, we have to get electricity to these 650 million people. We have to industrialize, we have to develop. We have to also use um, fossil fuels, the cleanest form, which is gas, while taking into consideration climate concern. Low energy, LNG, low carbon LNG in South Africa, that is being discovered in South Africa and Mozambique is going to save serve the day. But we need to finance that. We need to finance renewables. We need to get money. You're not going to get people out of the dark without financing renewables or without financing gas. We could have a discussion about coal and crude oil, and cutting back on that, but we need to drive up with LNG and we need to drive up with renewables. But what do you tell people in Cape Town who were five minutes away from having no water uh, in their taps because of climate change? What do you tell farmers in Zimbabwe who for the last number of years have not been able to uh, uh, grow crops uh, properly and get the yields that they require to get them out of uh, the, the, the challenges that we're facing economically because all of this is on climate change? So it's all very well to say, yes, we need the energy to help uh, our people get out of poverty, but maybe we're creating even more poverty with uh, climate change. 
You can't create more poverty when someone is in the dark and they can't even see the poverty. What we look at with someone in Cape Town not being able to have the right kind of water they need or the crops in Zimbabwe or even around well, West Africa. What you are seeing there is not all a climate issue. It's also a structural issue. We should never define, deny the existence of climate change and the implications of it. That's why we in Africa have an obligation to partake in the climate, in the climate problem. But also what we really have to really reshape this debate, Peter, is let's calm down the rhetoric. Let's calm down the demonization. Let's calm down on a lot of things and focus on science and focus on solutions. We choose to be part of that group that tries to get solutions to these common problems because it's not about the guy in Cape Town who cannot get water. It's the mother in Nairobi or the mother in Pumalanga who cannot even get food to eat every day. These are complex issues. That's why we need everybody on the table. That's what exactly what the chamber is advocating. We need everybody on the table. Oil and gas companies, a lot of those whom I, we represent, let's get to the table. Let the bring advocates get to the table. We're going to keep down. Let me tell you this. This is what is so amazing. Africa is going to be the solution to the climate problems. In Cape Town in November, we get in the world, the Germans, the Americans are coming. Some are going to be meeting coal. But in Africa, we're going to drive that problem. And we all have to challenge ourselves. Nobody loves the environment more than we do. We are the greatest environmental protectors. And we should not second guess ourselves or seek that to anybody. But now is the time. We have to fund it. We have to fund this transition. We, we believe in energy transition, but it's not going to happen without it being funded. Once somebody else is spending $6 trillion, we did promise $100 billion for 50 foundation. That money has not come in. That's a bad check. We need to cash that check and drive a transition in Africa where we get young people working, refining solutions, for the young men in Cape Town who can't get water, or the woman in Zimbabwe that cannot grow her crops, or the kid in northern Nigeria who doesn't have an option but to join Boko Haram because of climate crisis. We can find solutions. Let us be that generation that finds solutions. And our oil industry will stand strong with Africa who find solutions for the climate thing because the technology, we are driving the new technologies. We, been, we let's not delude ourselves. Every African is not going to have a Tesla by 2030. We need to build an infrastructure for renewables, and we need to not only talk, but actually get funding to make sure that this happens. Uh, you said that um, we are great preservers of uh, uh, the climate. Uh, but I put it to you that uh, we are also very guilty, especially when we think about areas like Mpumalanga, where coal mining has uh, a very bad reputation in terms of the environment there. Um, in fact, breaking records around the world in terms of air pollution. This can't be a good story. Surely there must be another way. It cannot be a good story. There must be another way. But here, here we go with people, with poor people, who have not been the biggest beneficiaries of the coal mining. Poor people in the Niger Delta, who were not the biggest beneficiaries of the oil spills or the oil that was taken out of their country and they did not get anything out of. Poor people in many other places, like in the Congo, who have their resources been exploited. Yet these same poor people are being told by those that benefited the most from it, and to say, well, then we took everything away from you. Then we, 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 you, didn't, you didn't benefit from this. But now you have an obligation to fix our problems, which for our industrialization, even though you've not industrialized. We are not saying that let's correct the sins of the past by with any kind of reparation. We say, that's fine, but we're going to be part of the future. We're going to be part of the solutions. What is going on in Pumalanga? It's not very good. I've been to those communities. I've seen how some of those communities have been devastated environmentally. And we need to come together to find, us, to find solutions. But the, the, true, the true test of this is how are we going to afford this? 
How are we going to pay for this? We are just coming out of a post-COVID crisis, or still in a COVID crisis, where most African states can't even have vaccines. They can't even get back their economic recovery. And then you try to tell them, shut down your oil fields, shut down your coal mines, and we, what, what are you going to do? You're going to create austerity and you're going to create political instability in some of these states that rely on fossil fuels. So we need to be able to say, this is a global problem and has to be met by a global need. It's not going to be solved by aid workers. It's not going to be solved by people just saying, we'll give you a few tokens. Most of the aid that is promised actually goes to European or American companies and without African participation, without local content, without local empowerment, you're not really the same people you want to save the climate. You're not, come, you're not working with them in the contracting and the local projects, the funding, the grants, everything goes into Western firms who send aid workers. What we say is that let's have some local content. Let's have local people, everyday Africans, young people, instead of crossing to the Mediterranean, let them save the planet. Let them innovate. Let them try. Let them get. Let them participate in this. Okay. So we correct the, the problems of the past. Africa can fix it, and that's the message we would have at the chamber. And that's what we'll take to Cape Town in November. We can do it in Africa, and we will we'll be part of the solution. And that's where we'll leave it. Thank you very, very much indeed, uh, Mr. Ayuk, for uh, your thoughts and your powerful message. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor.